we are now engaged is different from any previous war. Whilst on the one hand it first seemed as if the efficiency of machines and new weapons had replaced the man, or at any rate had minimized the importance of his efficiency, it has since been proved that the mechanical perfection of the machines or weapons, technical skill and even undaunted courage count for nothing if the physical strength and endurance of the individual fail. On the other hand, events have further proved that often success has been achieved or defeat averted only by the physical fitness, endurance and courage of the man himself. Unique and unorthodox forms of attack and defense by the enemy demand of us new and purposeful systems of training to meet him confidently and overcome him. Log work, as this is called, is a purposeful and interesting form of physical training. It strengthens the muscles, toughens the whole body, instills teamwork, rhythm, and teaches endurance. Tree trunks can be picked up nearly everywhere, and even if you have no gymnasium at your station, you can find some logs and practice these exercises. Half a dozen men in an isolated spot can get hold of a log, skin off the bark, and use it for these strengthening and agility exercises. Are you as fit as these fellows? If not, why not? You can do the same. Now, this exercise is good fun. The vertical high climb. When a man gets hold of a log, he feels he can do something, if it's only to climb it. It's tough work, but it makes you agile, produces stamina, determination, and endurance. When you have gymnasium apparatus available, make full use of it. Variety is the spice of life in physical training, as in everything else. It is essential that before men start fighting unarmed exercises, they should be physically fit and tough. Fighting unarmed depends for success upon physical fitness achieved and built up by training purposefully planned to develop self-discipline, toughness, endurance and aggression. Physical fitness, as you will see, can be developed through the syllabus of training you must know and practice. Self-discipline is fundamental and vital. Parade or marching discipline is easier and more effective when each individual is self-disciplined to control himself and act. The man who can control himself always has the advantage over the undisciplined man. The discipline of the unit depends on the individual. Toughness and endurance can be increased by the log work you've just seen and this rope work. Rope climbing exercises increase your agility, give you balance, mental alertness, and help you to think coolly from a height. You never know when experience of rope climbing will come in very useful. Now this, for example, the double traverse, is much safer than it looks and is an ideal method of crossing a ravine. If you have a few trees near your station or camp, you can make an open-air gymnasium with a few hundred feet of rope. It makes you foot sure, and increases your confidence. You don't have to be a tightrope walker to do this. Just make up your mind to have a go at it, starting from low heights first of all, and you will soon become adept. You may have to make use of a rope to climb from one ship to another, or to climb a hangar or other building. Practice it on dry land. One day it may save your life. Apart from the fun you get in rope work, the exercise is a toughening one and you've got to be tough to become expert at fighting unarmed. Aggression. Fighting unarmed demands an aggressive attitude of mind. Attack, attack, attack. Attack is the word you must have constantly in your mind. Each man should be imbued with the aggressive spirit. And the exercises with rifle and bayonet on an assault course will instill this principle in the mind. In this war, every one of us is a fighter and you may find yourself in the real thing at any time. Be prepared to take your share with your comrades in attacking the enemy with the right aggressive spirit. If you don't kill the enemy, he will kill you. And now for a practical demonstration of fighting unarmed. Unarmed fighting is the art of attacking and winning without weapons. You can kill your enemy, although weaponless. And now your target. Attack any part of the body 
and use any method of hitting or kicking to disable your opponent. Nothing is barred. Use the outside edge of the forearm and hand or the second knuckle of the middle finger as these are more effective than the clenched fist on many parts of the body. Certain parts of the body are more vulnerable than others so attack these whenever possible. The eyes can be gouged with the fingers or the second knuckle. A blow on the temple with a knuckle will knock a man out. Attack the nose with the clenched fist or the cutting edge of the hand across the bridge to break it, or use the cutting edge underneath to knock him off balance when he can be easily dealt with. Strike him across the throat with the edge of the hand, or to knock him unconscious, strike him across the side of the neck. If the stomach is unprotected, a punch, or better still, a knee or boot there will bring him to his knees. The crutch is man's most vulnerable spot. Knee him or kick him there whenever possible. When you've got the hun down, Kick him to death and stamp on his guts. The Hun would do the same to you, only worse. Remember, you've got to kill him or be killed. Nothing is barred. There's no code of rules when you're attacking the Hun. Kicking is a vicious means of attack. In kicking at the shin, use the cutting edge of the boot, following up with a downward scrape and a stamp on the foot to break the bones. The back of the neck, when exposed, is an obvious place to attack with a fist or the edge of the hand. Down he goes, kick him. Any part of the spine where exposed can be dealt with in a similar manner, particularly the base, where kneeing or kicking is most effective. In an attack on the kidneys, punch, or as he's falling backwards, knee, or if he's on the ground, kick him. Finally, a golden rule in attack is, a man without body balance has no strength to resist. Your point of attack will depend upon the position of his equipment, etc. But wherever you attack, be vicious, be ruthless. In attack, you may be thrown. Learn to protect yourself from being knocked out by falling correctly. Never take the weight of your body on the spine, pelvis, head, knees or elbows. Correct falling needs exact timing and perfect relaxation. So practice constantly. Make your movements automatic. You will rarely have time to think. If thrown forward, go into a shoulder roll. Roll across your shoulders like a ball. Notice the arm is used to assist quick recovery onto the feet. If thrown on your back, use the back break fall. Arms, feet, shoulders, break the fall. If you can't use your legs, you break the fall with arms and shoulders only, keeping the head well forward. Watch. This is the front break fall. Fall on your forearms, hands and upper legs, knees bent and hips drawn back to prevent injury. If your wrists are gripped, the weakest part of your opponent's grasp is the thumb. Therefore, to release yourself, work against his thumb. If the thumb is on top, force the wrists upward and outwards as quickly and as strongly as possible. If underneath, move inwards and downwards, making a circular movement in each case. When both wrists are gripped, release them simultaneously by these methods. Having freed yourself, always follow up and attack your opponent. Black has released his grip. Now he crashes his fist on White's face and knees him in the crutch. When you have freed yourself by a downward and outward movement, follow through, grasp your opponent's head and pull his face down on your knee. One of the most effective ways of disabling a man is to break his arm. This is one way of doing it. Black pulls his opponent towards him, steps across quickly, slipping his free arm over his opponent's arm and under his elbow to form a bridge grasps his own clothing, jerks down at the wrist, which will break his opponent's arm. If you miss the elbow, grasp your own forearm, jerk downwards on the fingers, breaking his wrist. In hand-to-hand -hand fighting, attack is the best defense. Now you've seen how Black defended himself by attacking. 
If, however, your opponent has a momentary advantage, you must turn his attack into your attack. Now watch how black turns white's attack into his attack. White attacks. He grabs black's wrist. Black deceives his opponent by an inward movement, then swings outwards and upwards quickly. He seizes white's wrist with his free hand and frees his own wrist by forcing white's thumb back. Then black grasps white's wrist so that his forearm is along white's, keeping it straight. Black steps across. White, now helpless, is forced to the ground. This movement breaks White's arm in three places, shoulder, elbow, and wrist. Black will throw White. White grips Black's wrist. Black steps across, grasps White's arm and throws him, then kicks him in the kidneys. Remember, nothing barred. Remember, anticipate your opponent's viciousness, ruthlessness. To win, you must be more vicious more ruthless. Always attack that part of your opponent closest to you. The fifth, which black counters with an arm break. White kicks at black. Black counters by crashing his foot against his opponent's shin, which brings white's head close to black. Again, black attacks. Keep this principle of attack always in your mind. Now, black and white will show you some releases from and counters to hair and clothing holes. White grabs black's hair. Black attacks the nearest part of his opponent, the hand, and holds it firmly to his head with fingers just clear of the wrist. Black pulls white down, bending his opponent's wrist back to breaking point. This brings white into position where black kicks him hard in the stomach. See what happens to white when he grabs black's hair from the rear. Black clamps his opponent's hand to his own head, turns, and with the hand still grasping, raises his head. And see what happens to white. Why doesn't white kick him? Because I bloody well can't! These grips and holes, which you've seen demonstrated, prevent your opponent from renewing his attack, and as you've seen, puts him at your mercy, and show no mercy. A most vicious and effective form of attack is kicking, and here again I want you to remember that the best form of defense is attack. When your opponent kicks at you, kick his leg like this, with the cutting edge of your boot against his shin. The harder he kicks, the more effective is the counter-attack. You can throw your opponent when he kicks. And as he falls, kick him. The spine is the best spot. You may break it. If you miss his spine, you'll get one of his kidneys. For the purposes of demonstration, Black up till now has had it nearly all his own way. Now we'll see what White does to Black. They will demonstrate releases from and counters to body holes. Again in slow movement, black attacks, grapples white round the body, white drops, grabs black in the crutch, black doubles up in pain, white knees him in the face. Again black attacks, but he's missed his arms, and see how white uses them. Behind the ears is the mastoid process, pressing inward and upward causes excruciating agony. Black is feeling it. Up goes his head. White ups with his knee and strikes him in the crutch. Black seizes him round the waist. White's arms are free, but he can't get at both of Black's ears, so he pulls his hair with one hand and presses Black's face with his other hand and fingers, gouging his eyes, at the same time twisting his head round and placing his right arm under his throat. With his left hand at the back of his head, 
He gets him into a stranglehold from which there is no escape. Now White is attacked from the rear. Did you see how it was done? No? Well, watch Black and White go through the movements and practice it yourselves. Black attacks White. White rounds his shoulders, forces his arms outwards and drops down. This partially loosens Black's hold. He turns his body and places one leg behind Black. Black is at his mercy. It's an easy matter for White to swing him over his body. He goes in to kill. Another method. White rounds his shoulders, drops his body, grabs Black's arms over his shoulders and throws him over his head. Should you be held from the rear and your hands are free, lock the elbow of your opponent's free hand. Grasp his free hand, bend his wrist, break it. This will leave you free to attack. This time, Black has interlocked his fingers. It's a good hold. White grasps the wrist. With the other hand, fingers extended, he forces Black's fingers back. And in this position, can break them. He's broken them, turns and knees him in the clutch. Men in mortal combat are like animals. And like animals, they'll fly at the throat. It's so instinctive in animals that you are bound to meet this form of attack. Now, White will show you how to release yourself from strangleholds. If your opponent grasps your throat from the front, strike at his crutch. With the other arm, deliver a forearm punch across his arms to break his grip. Follow up with knee in groin, and if necessary, any other opening. Another method. The thumb is the weakest part of the grip. Reach over and above your opponent's arms. Grasp his hand with your left. Using your right hand, force his hand upward and over. Break his grip, bend his wrist, force him down and kick. This time, White grasps Black's throat. Black seizes White's wrist with his left hand. He swings his right arm over and breaks the grip. He steps across with his right foot so that White's arms are dropped close to his body. His left hip is close to White's. He turns, pulls vigorously and throws him. Locks his arm, breaks the elbow and uses his own elbow on White's neck. Gets to his feet quickly and kicks. White attacks Black from the rear. Black grips his right wrist with his left hand. With right arm locks his elbow, bends his knees, keeping his back straight, turns and throws him on his back. He follows up with any attack. Now, White is trying to strangle him with his arms. Black bends his knees, grips White's forearms, pulls, turns his head, Bends the trunk forward and over he goes. Again he attacks. This time Black grasps wrist and elbow of one arm, forces the elbow upward and the wrist downward. Turns his body, slides through the hollow of his side, forces his arm up his back and strikes across his neck. Up to now you've seen hand-to-hand -hand fighting without any kind of weapon being used. But you must be prepared. Before you can close with your opponent, he may grab a club, a piece of iron, anything which might give him an advantage over you. Here are some improvised weapons of modern warfare. A club, an iron pipe. A chain makes a nasty mess when you swing it the right way. Barbed wire, nearly always at hand, is very effective. It tears a man's throat and throttles him. 
This is how to use the wire cheese cutter. Silent, swift and sure. You can cut a man's throat before he can say, Heil. Your own equipment and clothing provide weapons. The steel helmet. Your sock filled with sand. Necktie for throttling or gagging. Even a bootlace will throttle a man. A broken bottle. You all know how this is used. You never need be weaponless. But you must learn how to use any improvised weapon which may be near to hand. Well, Mac, take your pick. I think I can get you with this. You do? Right. Give me that steel helmet. Yeah. Come on, then. Let's have a go. As Black rushes in, White ducks underneath his arm, passes one arm across Black's chest, grasps the opposite shoulder, steps behind, and with his free hand grasps his own wrist and throws his opponent back over his shoulder. Goes in and finishes him off. When your opponent swings a weapon at you, meet him by diving low and striking with your forearm at the groin of his leading leg, grasping his ankle with your other hand. Push forward with the forearm and pull upward at the ankle to throw him. Get the weapon and use it. Every one of you must learn how to attack and defend yourself. Now, black and white are experts, but you must become expert too. Your life depends on it. Here, Smith. And you, Crowler. Have a go. Me, sir? Yes, you've seen it done. Now, come on. Have a go. Very good, sir. Go on, Smith. Have a go. Kill him. Practice makes for perfection. Keep on having a go, and you'll learn... Now see how it's done. When you're attacked by a knife or bayonet, you must first stop the blade. White attacks the upper part of the body. Black blocks the thrust by striking upward with his forearm across White's forearm, stepping slightly to the side. He reaches under his upper arm, grasping his own wrist in the elbow lock. See how Black's forearm gives him the leverage to break White's arm. He forces him down, grabs the knife, and strikes. A blow aimed at the top part of the body can be blocked. A blow aimed at the lower part of the body must be parried. To counter an attack on the stomach, Black uses a circular movement of the arm downward and outward, strikes at White's forearm. At the same time, he draws himself well back, grabs White's elbow, keeping his own arm on the forearm of his opponent. Now he forces White's elbow outward and pushes his arm up his back, takes the knife and strikes. All the movements, holes and throws you've seen can be done just as effectively when your opponent is fully armed and you are unarmed but in uniform. To demonstrate, Gray is putting on a German soldier's uniform. White is now in airman's uniform. The possibility of being caught unarmed by an armed opponent must never be overlooked. Your everyday routine duty as an airman makes this possibility almost a certainty. Remember, whether you are armed or unarmed, attack. Unarmed white will tackle the sentry 
from the rear. White's attack must be silent, swift and ruthless. Watch the movement. White runs at grey. Apply strangle hold with left hand at throat. This stops him yelling. The kick paralyzes the muscles and gets him off his balance. Now the spine is the target. That will disable him. Grey is out. Finish him off with a kick in the back and grab the rifle. Another attack. White grabs the helmet. Now he's in a position to use it. Kicks Gray's leg, paralyzes the muscles, pulls him down and knees him in the spine. Gray, strangled by his chin strap, drops to the ground. White grabs his rifle and finishes him. How to tackle a sentry in a bayonet hold-up. White runs up behind, kicks sentry's leg away. He falls. Black dashes in, seizes the rifle and strikes. Quite simple, isn't it? To save your friend and defend yourself by attacking. An alternative method. White kicks him off balance. The secret of all disarming movements is the parry, which can be done with either the left forearm or the right hand. Gray attacks with the point. White parries with his left forearm. Now Gray thrusts at his belly. Again White parries the blow with his left arm. Now the right hand parry. Gray attacks, White parries with his right hand. Gray attacks. White parries with the left forearm, defeats the attack, puts Gray off his balance. Now see the result of White's aggressive attitude, his coolness and his training. As you see, as soon as the weapon was parried, it became unarmed fighting. White has fallen. Gray is attacking him on the ground. White rolls away from the point. Before Gray can strike again, he rolls towards the weapon, sweeping the bayonet away, kicks hard at Gray's forward leg to throw him off balance and attacks him. Disarming and disabling movements after a parry. This kick, with the cutting edge of a service boot, will break a man's shin. The effect is to double up Gray's body, bringing his neck into a position where White can chop it with the cutting edge of his hand, breaking his neck, or at least stunning him. He picks the rifle up to make sure and finishes him off. Necessary to learn so many methods. I'll tell you. You'll never meet the same situation twice. Everyone will call for prompt action, will demand its own solution. Uh, White will think aloud, but you know how fast you can think when it comes to the real thing. Through practice, these movements become automatic and are done instinctively. This is the forearm blow. Now 
here's another disabling movement. White parries. Gray, carried by his own impetus, lands on White's arm and is thrown. And now, how to counter-attack against strokes from the butt of a rifle? <coughs> Simple, isn't it? If you've got the guts to stand up to it. White simply helps the butt of his opponent's rifle round, gives him a chin jab, kicks his leg and throws him. Here is another counter for attack at head. Counter for butt stroke at belly. As the butt comes towards the stomach, swing it up. Keep his arm above your head. Give him a good blow in the face with your other hand and knee him in the crutch. Throw him and kill him. Defense against a slash. Gray makes a butt stroke which misses. Returns with a slash to head. White blocks the slash with his forearm, grabs the rifle with his right hand, knees Gray in the crutch, and that's the end of that. Counter-attack for charge. When your opponent rushes at you, concentrate on the parry, and as he rushes past, trip him up and go for him. Now a rugger tackle. After parrying, White crouches down, rams his shoulders into Gray's crutch, throws him over his head, goes in and finishes him. And now a belly throw. This time, in slow motion, White grabs Gray's clothing, forces his right foot into Gray's stomach, gets down on his back, rolls backwards, straightens his leg and over he goes. That's it, finish him off. Do it again, White, at usual speed. Another effective counter-attack. When opponent leads with right foot, you can kick him in the crutch. Counter-attack against revolver hold-up. When held up incorrectly like this, strike downward and outward with left hand, knocking the revolver clear. Attack him, an arm lock, grab the gun, use it. If you are held up from the rear, turn quickly, left about, strike downward and outward with the left arm, Close with your opponent, disable him, grab the weapon and use it. You may have to search a prisoner. This is a good way to do it. From the on guard position, White passes his right hand through the sling, grasps the rifle at the nose cap. This allows the rifle to reverse itself and hang by the sling which is across the right forearm. In this position, the rifle can be handled easily and the left hand is free for searching. Ah, he's found some concealed weapons. There are many ways of marching in a prisoner. Here is one way. If you are being marched in at the point of a bayonet from the rear, so that the point is within striking distance, pivot round quickly to the left, 
knocking the blade aside with the left forearm and kick hard with the right foot at your opponent's leg. As he falls, attack him. This is the best way. Keep a safe distance from him, cover him slightly from the flank. This prevents you from being surprised. Officers, warrant officers, non-commissioned officers, and men of the Royal Air Force. Now you have seen how the individual self-discipline and physical fitness, so necessary and so evident in the training, are applied with confident and aggressive ability and with inevitable success. Now, this kind of fighting is going on all over the world today, and it may happen to you. Instructors will give you all the experience and knowledge they have. You must play your part. Persevere. Practice whenever you can. The time for training and practice must be found. Remember, get fit, keep fit. Your own physical fitness and the aggressive confidence born of it are duties you owe to yourself and your country. Which is it to be? This? <coughs> All this. <laughs> that? <laughs> All that. Him or you? <laughs> 